President Trump said he'd pick a new Supreme Court justice off a list his team released in 2017. Here's a little about each of them. Amy Coney Barrett belongs to a close-knit extremist religious group called People of Praise, who teach that husbands are the head of their wives and should take authority over their family. The women are literally called handmaids. Keith Blackwell forced the state of Georgia to let the KKK adopt a highway, which let them advertise for miles and miles of road. Steve Colaton ruled for a law that doctors must lie to women seeking family planning and tell them abortions lead to a higher risk of suicide. Raymond Grunder ruled for that same law, which also made women sign a document that said abortions terminate, quote, an existing relationship with an unborn human being. Allison Eid ruled for a law that allows companies to fire employees for cannabis use. In Colorado, where it's legal, Britt Grant is an extremist anti-LGBT activist. She once argued to ensure that transgender school children couldn't use the correct bathroom. Thomas Hardiman argued against football players with brain damage like CTE who tried to sue the NFL. He said, so now the settlement is going to be watered down by every field goal kicker who is depressed. Raymond Catledge argued that evidence of past consensual sex should be taken into account when gauging cases involved with rape and consent. Meaning, in Catledge's ideal world, if someone consents to sex with you once, you can have sex with them again, whenever you want. Joan Larson argued that then-President George W. Bush could disregard torture laws. Mike Lee believes Medicare, Social Security, the Affordable Care Act, and child labor laws are completely unconstitutional. Thomas Lee is Mike's brother and probably hasn't called him out on any of that. William Pryor once described Roe v. Wade as creating a constitutional right to murder an unborn child, and he ruled in favor of voter suppression. David Strass tried to limit the power of the Supreme Court that he might also get a seat on. Diane Sykes argued that anti-LGBT activist groups should get free government subsidies even if they refuse to obey the laws. Charles Kennedy coined the phrase partial birth abortion, which is used as a weapon to restrict women's health access. Brent Kavanaugh disagreed if the government aiding an abortion for an undocumented teen in U.S. custody. Edward Mansfield ruled against a woman whose boss told her to wear less revealing clothing to work because that boss thought she was so hot he couldn't control himself. He fired her because she said he was a risk to his marriage. Mansfield said that this was not an unfair firing or gender discrimination. Kevin Newsom defended the execution of minors and compared Roe v. Wade to the Supreme Court's decision that said slavery was okay. Margaret Ryan defended a man who attended a KKK rally and distributed racist literature as free speech. Amul Thapar sentenced an 84-year-old nun to three years in prison after she broke into a military facility and spray-painted peace signs. He's also Mitch McConnell's favorite. Timothy Timkovich defended a Colorado constitutional amendment proposal that would have prohibited cities from banning anti-gay discrimination. Robert Young ruled against a woman suing her rapist and her employer who ignored the rapist's threats. He wrote, Comments of a sexual nature do not inexorably lead to criminal sexual conduct any more than an exasperated angry comment inexorably results in a violent criminal assault. Don Willett compared gay marriage to marrying food. Quote, I could support recognizing a constitutional right to marry bacon and retweeted a 2014 Fox News story about a transgender student making a girls softball team and wrote, Go away, A-Rod. Patrick Wyrick worked with Scott Pruitt to defend the gas industry against environmental regulations, advocated for restrictions on women's reproductive health, and defended an anti-Muslim law that allowed an enraged intolerance towards Muslims. And uh, Federico Moreno once allegedly flirted with Paris Hilton when he was hearing a film contract dispute in which Ms. Hilton was the defendant, but otherwise hasn't done too much to threaten American democracy. That's hot. Whoever it is, they'll hold the seat for years to come, bringing their ancient value system into the future.